People say, okay, why would you stay up like 48 hours for a hackathon? Why would you stay up 24? And the thing is, it's genuine love for building. That doesn't take genius. That takes a lot of effort, but it doesn't take genius. I see tech as being integral to furthering social good. For blockchain, with what makes me enthusiastic about it is the fact that it's like layered on incentivization. And what incentivization does is it's a big driver of impact. Welcome to Blockchain North, everyone. Today, I'm speaking with Audrey Chen. I'm really excited because Audrey is not just a computer engineering student from Michigan State University with a strong passion for innovation, for tech, but also for social good. And so we'll be talking about that. And what's most incredible about Audrey is that she has already won 20 hackathons. So we'll be asking her how on earth did she do that <laughs> at a, such a young age? Before we begin, if you enjoy our interviews or simply if you want to support Blockchain North's mission to inform, educate, and inspire Canadians about the blockchain revolution, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like, send us your comments too. We welcome them, good or bad. Uh, there's no uh, there's no wrong comment, let's put it this way. Uh, we'll be happy to answer as well. And also stay till the very end because like with all interviews, I will ask Audrey for her surest prediction for blockchain and AI over the coming years. So Audrey, a warm welcome to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Flo. I'm very honored to be on the show. Awesome, where are you tuning in from? I'm tuning in from Michigan State University in Michigan. So like the East Lansing area. Perfect. Well, so I did a very brief intro of yourself, but how do you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm a passionate student builder for social good um, and a big hackathon enthusiast. Right, right. And what does it mean for you, the, the, that intersection between tech and uh, social good? How, how, how do you see that? I see tech as being integral to furthering social good. Um, and by that, I mean that in order to exponen exponentially increase the impact of social good, tech is going to be the main factor. Wow, really? The main factor? How so? The main factor is that Tech, you've seen impact on tech, like in communication through social media. You've yeah. seen um, the impact of tech on, commu on company infrastructures um, and infrastructure in general in connection. Um, and generally, you've seen tech help solve, help, help solve prosthetics. Um, yeah. And generally, bring accessibility to people and increase general accommodations. Right. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, but I can't help but think that at your age, and, and I won't ask, I, I think it's uh, mm -hmm. not politically correct these days <laughs> to ask your age, but I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. guessing you're young, you're, you're a student. I mean, you're mm -hmm. born in tech, aren't you? I mean, do, do you have any sense of what a pre-tech world looks like? A pre-tech world? <laughs> Not so much. I've seen in movies, but honestly, I grew up with an iPad. I grew up like on the computer and I'd say I did actually go outside and like play with my siblings. Um, but the world is changing. And I think like I was probably born like while technology had already like put its foot down. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say the Internet was, of course, already already pretty mainstream, I imagine. And of course, when we talk about tech, I mean, we're saying technology and technology has essentially mm -hmm. always existed in some way, shape or form. You could say that the mm -hmm. the, the, the the first knife that was uh, designed by a uh, by caveman or woman, uh, you know, would be uh, mm -hmm. would be a form of tech. But uh, how far we have come since then. So mm -hmm. you've already won 20 hackathons. I mean, just that number in, in a person's lifetime would be impressive. And you're probably in your early 20s and you've already won 20. Like, I mean, what did it take? Are you, do you, I mean, it seems to me like you must be a genius or do you think it's something else? I don't think it's genius. I think it's more curiosity and it's more of general enjoyment. Like people say, okay, why would you stay up like 48 hours for a hackathon? Why would you stay up 24? Um, and the thing is just genuine love for building and right. that doesn't take genius that takes a lot of effort but it doesn't take genius and i think you know hackathons they've got free food they've got free connections <laughs> and 
they've got the opportunity for you to learn. And that kind of opportunity is really hard to obtain if you think about it. Um, so I approach it with gratitude and just general enjoyment for hackathons. So I'm not sure in which order you would rank those uh, factors, but it seems like free food plays a part, curiosity <laughs> and opportunity to learn, which I guess go hand in hand with curiosity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Last hackathon, they literally had like Thai food, bro. They had Thai food for dinner. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love Thai food as well. So your work, as I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert here, but um, it spans over AI, blockchain, machine learning. Um, what excites you the most about this space? Because I mean, in the world of tech and engineering, I mean, you know, you could have chosen a lot of different things, right? You could have gone into rocket science, you could have gone in, into biotech. I mean, you know, there's no limit basically to scientific innovation. Uh, why AI, blockchain, machine learning specifically? Okay, so I can go into each of them like very briefly, but yeah. for AI, I'm very interested in the way that people interact with AI. Um, for AI for education, AI for um, for building applications and um, yeah, more complicated AI systems like multi-agent frameworks. For blockchain, what in, with what makes me enthusiastic about it is the fact that it's like, layered on incentivization. Um, and what incentivization does is it's a big driver of impact. Um, and for machine learning, I'm very interested in seeing how that will drive AI. Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah, those two go hand in hand quite naturally. But blockchain and AI more broadly, I'm, I'm lobbying machine learning with AI, if you don't mind, just to, to simplify a bit for the audience. Um, and mm -hmm. when you think of AI and blockchain and, and their intersection, how, how do you explain the opportunity that is there? Because I guess for most people, understanding AI or blockchain is difficult. So understanding the, the intersection between the two, I mean, and how it will, you know, transform industries and, and I guess make people's lives easier. Mm -hmm. So a good example of this is a project I built for a hackathon, actually. It was okay. called Better Byte. Um, and it was for the international hackathon um, that VeChain and EZA hosted. Um, and basically what the product did is that it allowed a user to upload a food receipt from a food bank. Um, and each time it was uploaded, AI was able to analyze it and see how much they would be rewarded in better tokens. Okay. So it was a combination of using AI analysis and crypto incentivization to encourage people to upload, to, to donate food to food banks and also get that food um, distributed better across societies. And that was an extremely compelling project. So in a sense, there's a, 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 a benefit of, uh, I guess, efficiency as well, right? Because we hear yes. all the time that supply chains are inefficient, mm -hmm. financial structures are inefficient. And if it comes, of course, to, you know, feeding people, I mean, that that's pretty critical that we be as efficient as we can be. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you have worked with big names, uh, NASA, Intel, Meta. I mean, I think, you know, probably you're the envy of some of your peers just for having those names on your CV already. That That is very impressive. How was it working in these, you know, mega companies? Uh, obviously, they're, they're interesting because NASA is public. Uh, Intel has been around for decades, whereas Meta is maybe... Uh, you know, the newcomer on the block, although I guess it in, it exists for almost as long as you exist. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, how has that influenced your, your own perspective on, on tech working inside those big companies, which must be very different than being at university? Yeah, it was very different. So this past summer, I was a production engineering, engineering fellow for the Meta Fellowship with Major League Hacking. Um, and what we did is that we had production engineers at Meta um, mentor us um, and work with site reliability. And what I thought was that their workflows were both, like the meta engineer workflows, very interesting. They always look for more optimal ways to approach problems. And that was really inspiring to me. Um, just being involved with it at such a young age is knowing that a lot of problems can be optimized instead of just simply solved. Um, mm. Yeah, and for NASA, um, I work in the NASA USRC research. Um, research, we're building this drone that actually continuously flies through a laser beam charge. Um, and that, that kind of project has been like what's pu been pushing my imagination. Those kind of companies, they're big names for a reason because their projects really are very innovative.
Well, I mean, incredible experience you have already. Uh, I'm wondering if you uncovered any problems in those organizations. What I mean by that is you're going to be starting your career. You're already starting it now. But I mean, you know, you probably have, let's say, 30, 40 years ahead of you, potentially, uh, maybe even more. Um, if you think about, you know, where those companies are now, were there things that you looked at and thought, surely that can be done better? And I hope that maybe I can, you know, through my work, contribute to making those companies what they will become in, in 10, 20, 30 years? Yeah, I think what could be better is more being more at the forefront of innovation and that they are. But I think it could they could be even more because um, some of these like com large companies, just like the sheer mass of them, um, when you shove out features, um, they're usually very small features. You just keep incrementally putting out small features. Yeah, um, that's different than like startups where like you are directly pu pushing out big features. Um, so I think that if these companies um, were able to like speed up their development, I think I could that would be pretty cool. That's a that's a very familiar message. I've worked in the energy <laughs> industry and in, in particular in the oil and gas industry, and there they were saying basically the same thing that the incumbents, the mm -hmm. big Exxon Mobiles, etc. They're working mm -hmm. on incremental innovation because they're so big. They have sunk so much, you know, funding, so many resources mm -hmm. in what they're doing that they can't constantly scrap it and like, you know, start from scratch. Mm -hmm. But startups, mm -hmm. of course, are very different. Do you think you'll have your own startup at some point? Is entrepreneurship part of your journey or are you mostly interested in, in joining and perhaps disrupting, disrupting these organizations from the inside? Ooh, I think after all these hackathons, I would actually, I am highly considering doing my own startup. Um, I really love the fast paced environment, um, pushing out large features um, and the creativity involved with it actually. So I'm highly considering doing my own startup, but I'm also considering um, just changing the landscape in these large corporations too. But you know, I have a few more years to figure that out. So we'll see. Do you have any business ideas in the back of your mind already or? Yeah, I got some proprietary business uh, ideas. Yes, of <laughs> course. That's very wise. I completely understand. Yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. To our viewers, if you're still watching, um, you know, thank you. Uh, we hope you enjoy this conversation. I mean, for me, it's fascinating to talk to uh, a really young, uh, you know, um, genius in my view. That's my 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 label for you, Audrey. I, I hope you don't mind. But uh, and for me, it doesn't necessarily just mean brain power. Like you said, it's curiosity. And we're going to talk about collaboration in a moment. I think that's a pretty big part of it. But if you're enjoying this interview, give us a like, send us your comments, subscribe to the channels. You can find us all over social media. It really helps us a lot. I want to ask you about Canada briefly because, you know, Michigan isn't too far from the Canadian border and uh, you've worked with some incredible American companies. I'm wondering if you have any experience with Canada. Yeah, yeah. I love Canada. I love the poutine um, <laughs> and I love it. I I'm love in Montreal. Happy. I'm in the capital of the poutine. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I got to go sometime. But yeah, I was recently at the near um, Hawk Hacks Hackathon. Um, we won first place near $3,000. Um, yeah, and that was pretty awesome. Like Canadian dollars what? or US dollars? <laughs> US dollars, man. Good. <laughs> Much better. Mm -hmm. And do you still have any involvements in Canada right now? Are you planning to come to um, come here at some point or do you work with anybody? Yeah. Yeah, I, I work with the near the near folks. Like we're doing a hackathon in Bangkok, actually. So, yeah, with near Canada. Um, yeah, and also Spur Innovation. Um, Spur Innovation is sponsoring the hackathon that I'm hosting at my university, and I'm also working with them in discussions about their new platforms. How does how who's Spur Innovation, and how does a group like that help you? So Spur Innovation. Um, is a startup that is innovating more on the decentralized side of things, um, AI and blockchain. And I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> good, pretty cool <laughs> is a good, uh, a good denomination. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like I was saying earlier, to me, you know, intelligence and probably not just to me, of course, is a combination mm -hmm. of things, right? It's not just IQ, it's, uh, it's also very much EQ mm -hmm. and, and everyone's mm -hmm. different and, you know, we all have a different combination of, of qualities, but, you seem to be pretty interested in social good and uh, hackathons are inherently collaborative from what I understand. Uh, you mm -hmm. literally spend time together for 48 hours and, and hack away. I mean, what do you see as, um, you know, community driven priorities uh, that, that hackathons can help address? So not just kind of 
fixing processes, but how can how can hackathons contribute to you know either generating more community or, or, or fixing issues for the community? Yeah, so I think hackathons are like a hub for ideas. Um, that's another thing that I like about hackathons. Um, it's not even if you just build a social app yourself, it's you're going to see the whole range of social apps that everyone in that hackathon is building. Um, and when you work in a team, there's like the idea of continuous integration. And when there's continuous integration, that means there's continuous communication. So you're always bouncing off each other, both technically and non-technically. And I think that's beautiful. That's very cool. Very cool. What are some of the problems in the world that, that you think, you know, deserve the most investment or, or attention by, by, by techies uh, around the world right now? What, what do you think are some of the biggest issues the world is facing that tech can address? So I think what tech is good at is connecting people. And I think that the issues around disease, um, the d disease, food, um, and general improvement of just like human quality of life are important. Mm -hmm. um, and one example is the project I recently built at UPenn's Hackathon this last weekend. Um, I built, I used Cerebras AI and used its fast inference to change the architecture of prompting with like the chain of, the, inspired by chain of thought. Mm -hmm. um, and by, the, by that, I mean, the result is Having an on-demand check-in for those people with chronic illnesses, um, being able to send any prompt, saying, uh, instructing them to do their medication. But it wasn't just a normal chat bot. It was the AI is able to go a layer behind and look at how the prompt can be assigned categories. For example, if the patient asked to instruct through their medicine, um, the AI will categorize the output as info, action, or alert. Um, okay. So the patient could ask, ask how to go through the medication. And so the AI responds with a blue text colored info saying, this is info about the medicine. Here's how it works. And then the action to take, which is take two tablets of the medicine. Um, and this makes the patient like be able to prioritize at a fast time as they're trying to accurately put in their medicine. Um, and also it tracks the patient's metrics. If they say, oh, I have a very low blood sugar, it sends an alert. The alert is um, in red. And then it sends the information to the doctor. So things like that, where the response time has to be fast and the AI has to be smart, those kind of projects are very important. Mm. And, and I guess there are some uh, synergies or potential synergies with robotics as well? And, yeah, and, there's And, and automation? Synergies. Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have, I, you know what I'd love to do? Like, I, I've mm -hmm. never been to a hackathon. Uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. I will with Blockchain North. Uh, there, there are quite a few mm -hmm. in Canada too, and maybe we'll go to the US as well. But you mm -hmm. just came back from a hackathon, you told me, I think yesterday. You just spent 48 yeah. hours at a hackathon and you've won 20. So you, I'm guessing you've participated in at least 20 <laughs> to have won yeah. 20. What's, yeah, it, what's it like? Just can you describe like the moment you walk in, what's the typical experience of a hackathon from the moment you get there till the moment you leave, what, what does it look like? What happens there? How do you feel? What do you like? What do you not like? Just give us a quick little impression, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, so you get to a hackathon, it's hour zero. You have zero, you have a blank slate. Nothing is able to be built. So you have absolutely nothing. And you're supposed to build an MVP in 24 hours or 36 or 48 hours. And you're like, dang, okay. Um, with the, the MVP well, within certain a framework, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just like build a product in 48 hours or yeah, 24. Usually it's 24, man. Like most of the hackathons, I've, yeah, I've been to 27 hackathons, 24 hours, um, 24 hours to build a project. No um, sleep. Some sleep, two hours of sleep, one hour of sleep. <laughs> usually, wow. usually a bit of sleep, um, but yeah. 24 hours straight, just building an app or a product. And the way it is at the hackathon is you kind of find like a designated area to work, like a designated table. They usually have like a hacker room set up. They have some snacks for you. They have some water. Um, and then you're just surrounded in a room with some with really bright people um, all in the same hacking room. 
and yeah, you just keep on keep on working. There's also workshops to attend. They like provide workshops from sponsors.、Um, they provide fun stuff. Actually, a lot of my friends are also karaoke enthusiasts. So we're at like 1 a.m. Like where our brains are done from the project, but we're like screaming in the microphones.、Um, People aren't drinking, then,、yeah. right, at a hackathon. No, 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 no. We aren't. We aren't. We we <laughs> would not risk drinking. We would not risk drinking for our projects, man.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, of course, of course. And so yeah, and so. Okay, I mean that's incredible. And and you like about the framework. Like before you get into a hackathon, th there is a theme, I guess, right? There is some. You, you don't just create any product, right? Yeah, 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 yeah.、Um, so you're given like different prompts or different categories slash tracks,、um, and those can be around social good, sustainability.、Um, another example is like best developer tool.、Um, yeah, those kind of tracks. So what's your next one? Next one is going to be at University of Michigan. It's this upcoming weekend, actually. So, yeah, excited for that one as well. That's incredible. So I can't believe you finally you told us that you've participated in twenty seven and you won twenty, and、yes. you've done so. You've done twenty seven. I think you told me earlier in two years. So、uh -huh. I'm just doing quick math. That's basically one every four weeks. Yeah, almost. I went for like ten weeks straight once. <laughs> ten weeks straight without you mean? No, ten weeks. Ten weeks doing hackathons. Ten weeks. Oh, like weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's insane. And of course, you're still studying. Yeah, yeah, still studying. <laughs> incredible, incredible. Well, look, I mean, it, it's been amazing asking you about hackathons because your face、mm -hmm. lit up right away. Like any time you're imagining being at a hackathon, I just see your face、mm -hmm. transform, like like a、mm -hmm. like a big sunshine, and that that's really nice to see.、Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna bring us to a slightly darker side of this interview, but like, what are some of the like, let's say, technical but also ethical challenges you see for AI in particular, and perhaps for blockchain and and technology more broadly? Or do you have concerns at this stage of your of your life about, you know, worst case scenarios? Let's say. Yeah, yeah, I have、um, issues with the data, like for both blockchain and AI and AI, people's data、um, will be used to train AI models. Um, perhaps like better processes, but sometimes that data isn't given from by consent.、Um, so there should be more of like an emphasis on privacy and security,、um, and also like the other ethical issue of like people's jobs, like artists.、Um, yeah, I've been like thinking about those as I build my projects, knowing that like whatever I build will have an influence on. Even if it's small, like an influence on someone else. So I'm trying to build products with like e ethical concerns, like at the forefront of my mind.、Mm. Yeah, of course I understand. What's what's the worst case scenario in your mind? What's the? I mean, I, I don't know. Terminator is probably like ancient for you, but that movie for people、mm -hmm. in my age, I'm in my mid forties,、uh, is like、um, you know, it, it definitely left an imprint. I, I don't know if you've even seen it, but、uh, do 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 you have these kind of scenarios in the back of your mind as like okay, you know. If we don't pay attention, this could happen. Hmm. See, here's the thing. Like when people ask me if I'm like scared of AI or scared of blockchain, I don't know. I I usually honestly say that I have more enthusiasm around it. Um, and like I don't know if that's the answer that you would have expected. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'm not too scared of AI. I think if we collect ourselves as a society. If we work towards that regulation, that privacy and security, we if we really, really emphasize that, then I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we'll be okay. All right, that that's a, that's、mm -hmm. a good message to share with people. And of course,、mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose you know, there's usually they say there is at least as many good people as bad people in the world. So you know, I mean, those yeah, forces yeah. will hopefully even out nicely. You know.、Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, given you're you're really embedded in this space,、uh, you're very、mm -hmm. active. You participate in all those hackathons. You're studying. You're working、uh, within、uh, you know major corporations.、Uh, what trends should people know about in the AI blockchain space? What would be your top three in each? Let's say top three trends that people need to know are happening right now in AI and are going to change the world. Okay, so the first one is agentic AI. So I mentioned multi-agent systems before,、um, but basically how not only you can interact with one AI, but how you can interact with one AI and the AI interacts with other AIs,、um, and this leads to more like specialized AIs, like AI agents.
Um, and also being able to solve more complex problems. Um, okay. oh, about to sneeze. Wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's um, see you in advance. Uh huh. Um, and then for blockchain, I would say I've been seeing more on like decentralization. Um, and like it, there's it's already been like a discussion with um with blockchain on decentralization. But like even more decentralization and more like open source, on like collaboration between um, the people that are involved with the space, and as you said, the intersection between AI and blockchain. That in and of itself, that intersection, um, I'd say is a big, like I'd say, new trend coming up. Most people that would know blockchain would know it as crypto, and most people who know crypto <laughs> would probably think of tokens and Bitcoin, of course, and Ethereum, and a few others that are you know, let's say above the surface and, and people know them. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite crypto? Ooh, and, a favorite? and why? Mm. I'm not going to ask you what's in your wallet. Just, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I haven't particularly taken a favorite to the specific coins because I've been mostly like a builder. Um, I've worked with Near, um, Polkadot, VeChain, um, but I would say that I'm more interested in how the smart contracts and like more of the developer tools alongside those blockchains work rather than tokens. Any specific utility that you find you know most promising in with crypto? Yeah, I would still say smart contracts, like being able to like initiate more secure transactions um, and just like funnel more of that incentivization cause. Do you use crypto yourself? Not, I'm not asking uh, you if you invest or if you trade. I just mean like, do you use it, for example, to pay things? Ooh, I don't. I've won like about hmm, $7,500 in crypto um, from hackathons. Oh, cool. And, yeah. And basically, I've just... I like I I hold I I hold some ETH honestly, um, but I haven't really gone out to really purchase stuff with crypto. Like I've just transferred it to USD, um, but that might change. Like when I go to Bangkok with Nier, um, we're gonna see how the ecosystem works. Because even though I participate in these hackathons, like I haven't dwelled as deep into like the the Web three um, crypto like, ecosystem mm. um, as much as I want to. And so I'm excited to go further and kind of see how that would work. Very nice, very nice. My, my last question for you is, um, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you the surest of? What is your surest prediction about AI? Let's say over the next five years, and then same question about blockchain. What is the one thing you are super high conviction? It's going to happen, you know, no doubt in your mind. Ooh, okay, that's a tough question because usually I prefer to be like more, like always have like a side of doubt. Whenever, mm -hmm. like, I come so up to cautious, a conclusion. cautious, maybe? Yeah, yeah, cautious. Especially, like, when I'm competing in hackathons, like, I always look from other angles to see, like, what is going to happen in the track. I, th I think just, like, in the mindset of a competitor. But, like, hmm. I'd say if I... One thing that I could be the most sure of for AI is that, for sure, it's not going away. Like, <laughs> no one's about going to take AI away. And if we're going to have to deal with AI, we're going to have to figure out how to live alongside it. Um, so that should be more of like an upcoming discussion is that how are we going to coexist with AI? Um, and for blockchain, one thing I'm sure of is that it's not going to disappear either. I mean, as things become more internet heavy, um, and technology grows, like not just AI, like blockchain is going to stay and, um, we're going to also learn, I think, I think. One thing I'm sure of is that its, edu it's education is going to expand. Um, there's like the general population, when I tell them I like, like do crypto or like Web3 and stuff, they're like, what? Um, what do you tell them? How, um, do you, how do you explain why what you do actually matters to people who don't even have any sense of what it really is about, how it works? How do you justify yourself? <laughs> yeah, I just connected to the projects like that I was talking about, like things that people can understand, like how it betters food distribution, how it betters like um, incentivization, really. Like, 
I think explaining like the con the deep concepts of crypto aren't the way to start explaining it to people who haven't learned about crypto. I think it's connecting it to results and impact that um, help them understand it more. That makes a ton of sense, Audrey. You're so clear, and I love how you take your time to answer your questions, and uh, and to uh, and and you know you're you're quite clear. You're you're to the point. You know. So, is there anything you would want to communicate to maybe Canadians? or others who would be watching this interview um, yeah, about your work? Is there anything you haven't been able to share today? I just want people to stay curious. Like, you never stop learning. Um, and there's always more you can learn, like every minute, every second, <laughs> every hour. There's always something to stay curious about and something to really dwell into. So I hope everyone in Canada, in Canada stays curious. That's a great message. Curiosity was definitely a big part of uh, of this interview, at least from from coming from you. Thank you very much, Audrey. It's been very nice interviewing you. You know, I've interviewed a lot of leaders in my life. Yay, we did it! It's a team effort. Uh, it's like a dance, you know. And uh, but but I haven't interviewed a lot of students. And uh, I'm you know again I'm 46 years old, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's just amazing to see you know what you guys are working on because that's the future. So. Uh, where can people find you, by the way, online? We'll add this in the in the descriptions to the video. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as Audrey Chen. Probably just search up the word hackathon and you'll find me. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I've got like 50,000 followers. Um, just posting like blogs um, on hackathons. And I'm usually more active there. I'm actually active on both. But yeah, Instagram at gia.seed. Um, awesome. Yeah, gia.seed, Audrey Chen. We'll link to it in, at the bottom of this video. But again, thank you very, very much. Hopefully you share all this on your Instagram. We'll cut lots of shorts and share them mm -hmm. with you. And of course, everyone who watched till the end, you know, which is something in this day and age, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. Uh, feel free to follow us, like us, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and also send questions if you have any. For Audrey, of course, for us, I will definitely uh, pass them along and make sure they're answered. Uh, for the rest, thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Stay curious. You heard it from Audrey. Thank you very much.